MMA fighting here at UFC 228, speaking with Nico Montano, the UFC women's flyweight champion who fights Valentina Shevchenko on Saturday night. Uh, first things first, Nico, I mean, it's been a long nine months on the shelf. I know a lot of that time was spent trying to get back to full health. Uh, what does it feel like now that you're back here, you're, you're defending your title, it's officially you know, time to be back? Um, well, all of that time was spent recovering and healing up, so it just feels like you know I came out of that and right back into work, so it doesn't seem like any time was wasted at all on my part. I mean, you've obviously you know had dreams for a long time of being a UFC champion. Uh, now that it's here, is the reality different than in what you maybe expected? Yeah, I never really dreamt of becoming a UFC champion, so I didn't really know what to expect or how to dream it. You know, it just kind of like fell on my lap, and it is what it is now. What was the best part of the, the past year for you, this year of, of being champion and experiencing this? Um, just getting to see how much of an inspiration I am, especially to the people back at home on the Navajo Reservation. Um, there's a lot of kids out there who look up to me now. And, you know, I was doing the same things I was doing before I had the belt. And now that I have the belt, I definitely have the recognition. But I'd like for them to know that even without the belt, they can achieve whatever they want to achieve. I, it, it, you know, it's obvious you take immense pride in your heritage and everything like that. Um, what has that meant to you, really, to be able to, to get this platform? I know it's something you, you've struggled with a little bit, embracing it, but what has it meant for you, really, to be able to have that platform and use it in the way that you have? Um, it just mean, like, it means a lot. It means that there's, it like, so I'm learning a lot about myself during this process as well. Um, and I'm learning that a lot of my strength comes from my traditions. You know, a lot of home stuff, you can go home and just take everything for, for granted and uh, not for to your advantage. And right now I think I'm using that to my advantage. Um, yeah, so it's all, it's all just a process. It's all in, in the works still. <laughs> Well, I, I know the odds at this point have been one of the people keep talking about, keep bringing it up, so I won't even ask you how you feel about it. Just uh, curious, you know, are being the biggest betting underdog as a UFC champion in history, where do you think that's coming from? Like, why is this even happening? I have no idea, you know? Um, I really can't answer that. I don't know. People are crazy. <laughs> it seems like something you've almost embraced, though, this underdog role. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, I've been an underdog throughout the whole show, throughout a lot of my fights before getting onto the tough show. Um, so it's like I've, I've been saying, I have nothing to compare it to because that's just what it's, it's been. A fantastic story came out today from Scott Harris uh, on you, your background, uh, elaborating on that. But a little piece of it was was interesting. Uh, in there was a portion a portion of the story where you mentioned that the UFC wanted you to dress up in a headdress and something like that. Can you elaborate on, on what you meant by that? No, the UFC didn't want to dress me up in a headdress. It was, um, I don't know why he wrote that. It was uh, Gaethje on the Tough Show, those guys. They were like, we gotta get you walking out with something. And it was like, no, <laughs> let's not, you know. Navajos don't wear headdresses, A, B, let's not push me into being, becoming a stereotype, you know. Um, but it was all just because a lot of people just don't know. They don't know the traditions and the cultures of the Native Americans here. Um, and it's kind of, it's, you know, it's not completely their fault because that's what's written in the books that they read in school, in elementary and middle school. But the real, and that's the books that we read on the res going to school. And we're reading these books we're like, no, there's no, there's no, no talk about the Trail of Tears. There's no talk about the long walks. There's no talk about scorched earth. There's no talk about anything that's legit. So we kind of have to take everything with a grain of salt, and I think that's kind of why we're just so kind of hesitant when it comes to like making promises, because we're technically a sovereign nation, but we're not, right? We get our school, all our schooling from the government still, um, just so that we can assimilate to what the idea of society means to be a successful person. When in all reality, I mean, living off of the land is the most stable. Well, well, switching over to you know, your opponent, uh, Valentina Shevchenko, uh, there is a lot of hype behind her. I'm just curious, are you impressed by anything you've seen from her? She's quick, you know. She's been doing this her whole life, so I wouldn't expect anything less from that. Um, yeah. <laughs> what, what do you feel like are her strengths as a, as a fighter, as an opponent? She's quick. <laughs> <laughs> 
It's as simple as that. Well, I mean, she does. She has one thing repeatedly. She said in the leadership is that she doubts whether you'll show up on Saturday. Uh, where do you? She said it again yesterday. Where do you feel like that's coming from? She lives in La La Land. <laughs> I don't know. She's a weight cut brain. <laughs> well, hey, last question. Last question. Uh, how do you how do you get this done? How do you defend the title on Saturday? Um, I just stay reactive. You know, I stay in there and keep my flow, keep my wits about me, and still keep having fun. You know, don't get too emotional about anything. Awesome. Thank you for your time.